So some things we'd like you to know about carburetor icing. Well, the process of carburation, or really the air flowing in through the carburetor mixing with the fuel, that process as the fuel vaporizes into the air and the air flows through that restriction in the carburetor and the temperature drops due to the pressure drop inside that carburetor, well, that can reduce the temperature of the incoming air by as much as 33 degrees Celsius. Now, with that 33 degrees Celsius temperature drop, it would be very easy to be flying around and say, 70 degree air Fahrenheit and have the temperature drop below freezing on us and cause carburetor icing. Even a small amount of carburetor ice can reduce the engine power available and also create some engine roughness. So the easiest way to tell you have carburetor ice aside from the instruments is noticing a loss of engine power or engine roughness. Typically when I get carburetor ice in my airplane, and this is just one airplane, each airplane's a little bit different, I'll notice the engine roughness and a very minute loss of power at first. So the loss of power is not always that obvious, and it, sometimes it can be very subtle on the instruments as well. We'll talk about the instruments more here in just a moment, but at first I really start noticing some engine roughness, then I look over my gauges, I notice that I'm losing some manifold pressure, that my RPM's constant, but my manifold pressure's dropping, and I realize I'm developing carburetor icing, I need to apply carburetor heat. Now, of course, applying carburetor heat in an airplane reduces the available power to the engine because we're providing warmer, less dense air to the engine. And we're also enriching the fuel air mixture when we apply carburetor heat, possibly making the combustion process less efficient and making the engine produce less power on top of that. So the idea here is to be, for us to be able to determine when we're likely to get carburetor icing, at all times being vigilant for it and being ready for it if it were to occur to us, but we can use this chart here to help us make a determination as to when we're most likely to get it. So let's just look at the METAR report and say, okay, the METAR says it is 10 degrees Celsius outside with a dew point of five. Okay, so we go 10 degrees Celsius, dew point of five, and we realize, oh, hey, we're in a little bit of a danger zone there. What if it was 10 degrees Celsius and the dew point was minus 10, so it was very dry outside? Well, a lot less likelihood of carburetor icing because there's a lot less moisture available in the air. So let's take a look at what carburetor icing would look like for us in a fixed pitch propeller airplane. Keep in mind, one of the most common times to get carburetor icing is when you don't have full power set. So maybe when you're coming in to land and you have a reduced power setting of 50% or less, say, but it could happen at any power setting. Let's go ahead and take a look at our fixed pitch propeller airplane now. So how do we know that we're getting carburetor ice? Well, first, we're going to just you know be cruising along, minding our own business, and we're going to notice that, say we have 1700 RPM set here, coming in on a nice long descent, maybe we notice that RPM starts slowly decreasing. So without touching the throttle at all on this fixed pitch propeller airplane, it's a little different on a constant speed propeller airplane, but with this fixed pitch propeller airplane, we see that at RPM 1700, and slowly as we pick up carburetor ice, it decreases little by little, maybe a 50, 100 RPM, Enough for you to notice it though, right? Enough for you to hear the engine rolling back. Enough for you to notice the decrease in power. Maybe you go to full power and you just don't get full power out of it. So you go ahead and pull carburetor heat and you notice as you pull carburetor heat, the engine runs a little rough, but then it slowly starts to build that RPM back as it melts away that ice. So initially you pull carburetor heat, you get a further drop in RPM, but as that ice melts away, it slowly picks back up the RPM that it was missing because that carburetor ice was closing up the carburetor throat. It was the same as actually closing the throttle, so actually pulling the throttle back, you're restricting the airflow to the engine through the carburetor. Now you can go ahead and turn the carburetor heat off, you get that final extra increase in power, all the carburetor ice is gone, you're back to normal, and all is well. So that's what it looks like, and for the written test, what I want you to know is it occurs between 20 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It can occur at other temperatures, but is likely between 20 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, outside air temperature to pick up carburetor ice, and high humidity certainly contributes to it. Definitely pretty rare to get this in Arizona. Not that it's impossible, but low humidity, there's not a lot of moisture in the air, so not a lot of water to make the ice in the first place. Now let's take a look at a constant speed propeller airplane. So this airplane here has manifold pressure and RPM. Now the propeller governor is going to decrease the load on the engine so that as the engine produces less power, we don't have a decrease in RPM. So you won't see your RPM change. What you will see is a decrease in manifold pressure. So with constant speed propeller airplanes, we see a decrease in manifold pressure. And that is our warning sign that we are getting carburetor ice. So that ice is creating a restriction in the carburetor and not allowing air to flow through the, to the engine. The same effect of us pulling the throttle 
back and closing the throttle plate and restricting the airflow to the engine, we're going to get less power and we're probably going to experience some engine roughness. So now we'll go ahead and pull carburetor heat on. We notice that initial surge as we have that loss of power from the warmer air hitting the carburetor and hitting the engine. So we have a little bit less engine power at first, then we start melting that ice. We get a little bit more roughness in there as that ice melts and water goes through the engine. And then as all that ice melts, we finally see our manifold pressure rising. We can see on this particular airplane, we're lucky enough to have a carburetor temperature gauge so we can see it's above 32, it's melting that ice. We think all the ice is melted, we turn the carburetor heat off, we get an extra boost of power now that we have colder air flowing to the engine, we can make more power that way. Also, pushing the carburetor heat in leans the mixture or sets the mixture back to where it was initially when we first pulled carburetor heat on, we were enriching the mixture. And now, we are back to an airplane without carburetor ice, and if we apply full power, we should see a full 29 or 30 inches of manifold pressure, depending on what altitude we're flying at. Of course, higher altitudes, we see lower manifold pressure settings, even with full power on a naturally aspirated engine, an engine without a turbocharger. But if we still had carburetor ice and we applied full power on this naturally aspirated engine and we only saw 25 or 26 inches of manifold pressure and we're still down around 1,000 feet, well, we would expect to see more. We'd expect to see 28 or 29 inches of manifold pressure, and that would be a clue that we still have carburetor ice. We need to turn the carburetor heat back on. If you're going to run with carburetor heat for an extended period of time turned on, you're providing less dense air to the engine, it may be a good idea to go ahead and lean your engine to prevent any fouling on your spark plugs from an overly rich mixture caused by less dense air going to your engine from the carburetor heat being turned on. The most important thing I can leave you with here is this. If you really do suspect carburetor ice, the first thing you should do is turn on carburetor heat. The next thing you should do immediately after that is try to increase power, whether it's increasing the throttle on a fixed pitch propeller airplane or increasing the throttle on your constant speed propeller airplane and then also increasing RPM. Make that engine make heat. You want to get heat flowing through that engine and heat flowing to the carburetor to melt the ice before it's too late. Once the ice builds up enough, it's going to reduce engine power to such an extent that the engine won't be making any more heat because there's no airflow and no fuel going to the engine anymore. And then you'd have no way to melt the ice and you're going to be committed to a power off landing at that point.